love me, yeah, they love me. First love yourself. For that. And God we trust, trust me. I don't trust myself. Your yeah, jewelry, I get it took. No show. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They'll also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special oh. break when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your host, Mace, and today we are joined with our analyst, Maurice Claret. Mo, what's going on, Mo? You trying to pump up the mighty Yukon Huskies. I see what you're doing. <laughs> it was an amazing weekend. What can I say? East is over, and I'm no longer an expert. April Fool's. <laughs> 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 yeah, April Fools. Oh yeah, go ahead, Mo. What's, how you feeling today, Mo? Look, my boys back in the Final Four, so they out in Arizona. If you see me on Twitter, if you see me on Instagram, you know I've been going crazy over them. And uh, if anybody had a chance to see the game, y'all now see why these guys are so serious. And it was fun to watch. It was the first time I've ever seen these dudes go on a 30-0 run. First half was close. But at the end of the day, man, my guys went out in the second half. They made their halftime adjustments. And they went on a 30-0 run. And uh, it was phenomenal. I'm happy. And uh, before the game and after the game, they was hitting me up. It was like, yo, bro, we got to see you in Arizona. Last year, I missed Houston because my, my house flooded. This year, I'm telling y'all right now, Dan Toscano, Kimani, Dan Hurley, all yes. my guys, all the players, we in Arizona, baby. Title town. Oh, I can't forget this. They got the girls, too. The girls are in the Final Four, too. So you have two teams. I don't know if this has ever been done. I really don't. But to have two teams in the Final Four is pretty special. So title That's town. been done before. Come Ooh. on, Mo. Ooh. Please stop that, Mo. Just stop Ooh. it. It's just know it's been done before, and the expert told you, man. It, <laughs> don't pay me to keep going through everything I know. You see what I got Marnie in my pocket. You, you see what I'm telling you? But but check this out. That's a great thing. I think I'm I'm really interested to see what um UConn do. It would be a brilliant thing if they can win both at the same time. And yeah. we, we should get into that conversation a little bit later with um with the player name page and everything like that. But but stat, what are we supposed to be talking about? Yeah. So before we get into oh, that, stat, to, do your job. Just to answer <laughs> Maurice's question first, it looks like the last time it's been the men and women's team in the final four 2017 was South Carolina. So, oh, okay. Yeah. The expert. <laughs> That's why the expert is here. So when Cap goes forth, I can step in because because yeah. that is a capper too. She's she's a she's a she's one of the, what is it called? You were the kappa. The <laughs> what, kappa. Are, what are you? What are you? What are you? What, how do you say the AK? What is it? Alpha kappa alpha. So oh, yeah. Incorporated. <laughs> incorporated kappa. Incorporated. So. Yes, gotta make that. Hey, get him that. <laughs> so I did know this thing about um, what you call it. I knew this about South Carolina, but see, that's why they have me here because when you guys get off the rails, you need somebody who knows their stuff, and that's why I'm here. So continue to do your part, Stat, because I'm gonna do mine. Okay. <laughs> well, we're going to start off kind of hot because we got two sports people up here beefing. So Damar Hamlin and Antonio Brown, AB, a.k.a. our previous analyst earlier in the season. Yeah. So basically, there was a tweet on Twitter that said, comment a fictional character's death that you have not gotten over. AB responded, posting a picture of Damar Hamlin with the hashtag CTE ESPN. So CTE ESPN, just together. That's his, you know, network. That's <laughs> it. 
Yeah, he tweets a lot of stuff with the hashtag CPESPN just so people are up to speed. Damar saw the tweet and he responded, you just DM'd me on Monday. Guess you playing lame games on Twitter with my situation because I ain't DM you back. I pray God don't ever let me turn into a burnt out old head like you. I used to look up to you damn near shit sad for real, for real. Talk about a clone, bring the real AB back. There was a little bit more back and forth, but mm. changes in what AB said to Damar Hamlin. Well, we're not going to go Maurice first because he's filling in for camp. So <laughs> he's here as camp, you know? And I'm going to go first today, Mo. We're going to switch it up. Shout out to Cam. Cam, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And, and stop stop ducking the expert. Wherever you are, stop ducking the expert. You know, get on the plane. You might be sitting next to Mike Tyson, and he's going to want to box, Cam. So just get over it, you know? You know, for the people that are watching, Cam sometimes gets on the plane. He runs into Mike Tyson. So now he's nervous to get on a plane. I'm I'm just telling you what a little birdie told me. Not a dipset bird, but a little birdie told me this is what I heard. So, you know, April Fools, you know. <laughs> but check this out. When it come to A B and Hamlin, I just think this is this is as messy as mess can get. Pause, no ditty. This is as messy as mess can get. For you to for you to actually do this, I mean, this is pause before I say that for real, no diddy. This is this is as below the belt as you can get. To say that you haven't seen this happen, and then you put up the picture of him like in a car. Didn't he have like a cardiac arrest on the field? <laughs> When they played the Bengals. This is, is this is crazy. And to think that this how people be that he said he he DM'd them just Monday. We gotta know if that's true, because that's that's even more crazy that you just DM me. But I think the thing is he DM'd he was DM'd by A B and he didn't respond. And you know celebrities can really not A B, but celebrities can really be upset. If you leave them on scene, right? Say you got a, a baddie leave a, a dude who think he's lit on scene. He's like, what? That's when his eyes get to squinching, huh? He can't believe that this person has left him on red. And then when I did a little research, Hamlin said that AB been DMing him for a whole year now. At least a year now. So he been on scene. For a year. Do you think he's just hating or do you think he's saying it to get his attention? That's the way Hamlin said it. He's doing it just to get his attention. But I think when when um A B responded back and then Hamlin came back, it 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 let me know that the same people that give out a lot of these things online, they can't they can't take it pause when somebody does the same thing back to them. Like, so it made me think of myself, like things that I say about people, but I only tell the truth. So I don't ever try to go overboard on the people. And I think people need to pay attention to that. But you you, you feel free to go more. And I'm, I want to add that to the end before we move on to the next topic. No, that, that was a good assessment. Um, when, I, when I look at this, and I've been watching AB for a while, Mm -hmm. And it made me think of two things, right? I know with DeMar, I was actually at that game. So I know yeah. it was like a, a real serious, um, it was a serious moment. If you was in the stadium, man, it was like some shit you've never seen before. Uh, just to have a whole NFL game stop and for somebody to die, right? So you're going to internalize that totally different. And then when people start to joke about it, uh, that's one set of feelings. But then also I think that AB does some shit that, People may look at sideways, but they never say nothing because he's never doing something to them. And so when DeMar says those comments, he like basically saying like, nigga, you've been on some weirdo shit for a long time, but nobody ever addressed you. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. now our paths just collided and I'm the one to address you. And even when you say like, uh, you know, I used to look up to you, 
basically like you call somebody burnt out. It's like nigga, either you on coke, you you doing type all type of drugs or some shit because this ain't how dudes act who who have who, who just in a healthy space in their mind, right? And like that that's one point of view. But then also when I see A B online or through shit that he's going through, you'll see him where him and Le'Veon together and they'll be doing some shit where they like coherent, they in a brotherly space, they cool, they happy, whatever. But then also I think like when you're done with sports and you have nothing to do, I think you do shit for attention. You know what I'm saying? And then you like the like A B's not crazy. But should he, you but should you be doing things for attention? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go somewhere else with this. Okay. I think there's a, I think there's a lot of people, man. Once you get all of the money that you've ever gotten, once you get all the fame and notoriety, you really don't know what to do with yourself. And so you just start doing different shit. And sometimes we call it weird. Sometimes we call it whatever. And this is what happens. It's just not like, like what AB. Once you, like, I'm telling you, I, I said it before, and y'all think I was tripping about LeBron. And I always describe it with him in the athletic sense that he's reached every goal that he's had and so now you just start to function in a different space. But as dudes with money, you hit all of your goals. You hit everything you're trying to attain. And then you just start doing, like, weirdo shit. And so then you want to be like a rock what? star. Give me an example of weirdo. <sighs> is, is that being weird? Am I being weird? No, no. Just, like, I, I, here we go. This is what I'm saying. No, nah, because I hit had... some of my goals. Cam hit his goals. Is Cam being weird? No, but 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 you all aren't done, right? So they're oh, okay. still think so so when you when you're still trying to accomplish something, you understand that there's parameters that you need to behave in to keep moving forward, to keep attaining your goals, to keep progressing, right? Yeah. But once people have reached a point where I got all my money, I got everything and more than I've ever thought I've had before, A B went from junior college to I think Eastern Michigan or one of those smaller schools. Yeah. Then he, I, I think he, he he didn't get drafted high or he, he was undrafted. I don't know. I don't know that piece of it, but we can get the facts on it. Then he goes to Pittsburgh and this motherfucker shoots out like a rocket and becomes a star, bro. Mm -hmm. You feel where I'm coming from? So he's a fifth round pick. So he, he goes and becomes a star. And so through that, you basically telling everybody, fuck you, motherfucker. Like I've achieved more than I've ever thought that I achieved. And so if you go back to that interview where he was sitting in his house and I'm not sure who was interviewing him. He was sitting down across from him on a one-on-one -on -one interview like, man, look what I got. My house paid off. I got millions of dollars. I got a Hall of Fame career. And he was acting like I've just arrived. But then I think once you reach that point, you don't wake up with purpose, so you self-destruct. Like, this goes somewhere else. And I'm just talking about, like, if you look at people who, who don't wake up and say, hey, man, I have something to do every day or I have a, I have a significant purpose these people, in some regard, they go entertain themselves or do things for attention. That's my personal opinion. And I'm just like, just just through life assessment, even through what I went through personally, I think that A, B, still in that face or some of the things that he does go through that vein. That's my opinion. Man, that's interesting. I see you didn't say stat name. So do you think stat is going to be I no, like that's this not. <laughs> 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 That, so look, that, but, but we can use that as an example. That's trying to still come up. So she behaves a certain way. She presents herself a certain way. It's certain things I will and won't say. But I think once you once you get to a point where you say, fuck it, you just begin to do whatever. And that's what DeMar Hamlin is saying. Like, bro, you know, when we come from the NFL, we come through this fabric and come through this line. We don't act like that. And I, I think that's what's happening. Yeah, I think I think that's interesting that you say that. So you're saying after after people get money, they just become clowns, basically. If you if your goals are small and you don't reset, I I personally believe that you need to keep on moving the needle as to what you want to accomplish. Not for Give vanity. Give me four clowns. Give me four clowns. <laughs> Give me four, four clowns. <laughs> of clowns, huh? And, and, uh, and it goes a disclaimer. I'm not calling you, a clown, but I, and, you know to understand what he's saying. I, I need an example. Who's an example? Matter of fact, don't even say their name. Just say something people would do. That right? That in order for people to understand, 
Cam was here, he'd be like, what Mo is really trying to say is this. Say. What is what is Mo really trying to say in Cam's words? Hey, this, this the alley you I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no name, but what do they what what would they do? Because here at it is what it is. People count on us for the truth. They count on us for the truth. Oh man. Don't How about no this name. You? No name. Hey, you, 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 you go stat, and then let me, let me, let me think of them. But I'm gonna give you some clown behavior before it's out. I'm pretty sure our, our, our chat gonna tell us on YouTube who some clowns yeah, are. Yeah, you're watching this right now. List four clowns, right? You do it, <laughs> and instead of us doing it, you do it. So they can't get mad at us. You call them a clown. If you're watching, it is what it is. Subscribe right now. Follow this link. And also, right, right now, who you think has clown behavior? Is it when a person grow their hair out? They never had their hair grown out before. What do they do? Do they get 50 years old, put diamonds in their teeth? Like, what? what is the clown behavior he's talking about? Do they start painting their nails? No, we're going to get to that later. Stack, can you take over before I take over? Go ahead. <laughs> like, like, you know, a great idea to me. Definitely let us know in the comments. As far as A, B, just my quick little opinion. Um, I feel like the purpose of AB's Twitter is to try to be like a meme account because it's I, like I follow him because obviously he was on the Steelers and Le'Veon Bell. Like I see the relationship that they have, like Maurice was talking yeah. about. I think he was trying to make it like a meme account. And because he's known for saying uh, out of pocket things, People follow him for out-of-pocket tweets. But it comes to a point where there's certain subjects that are just, no matter what you say, there's no comedy there. At the end of the day, DeMar Hamlin almost lost his life. That was, I mean, Maurice was at the game. I wasn't there, but even from the TV, it was like everybody stopped what they were doing and was like, whoa. Wow. And mom it doesn't even watch sports. It was a God moment. Bested. <laughs> yeah. So moments like that are just no matter what you try to, they're just not funny. Like, I don't, it doesn't matter, you know? You want a reaction, it doesn't, like, he's, we are blessed that he's alive today. So one yeah. of those things, you know, I actually respect DeMar for even, like, clapping back, like, saying something, because it's just, like, a lot of people in those scenarios would probably feel some type of way and not, but he at least, you know, spoke to AB directly on Twitter and called him out. And AB tried to kind of say something back, I think he tried to say it wasn't him. I don't like he has intern. There was like a lot of different things. Okay. In the, the day, I just feel like when you say something like that, you could at least own up to him or at least say something to him after the fact because that was his life, and I just feel like that's something not to be played with, regardless of whatever you're trying to trying to do on your Twitter. So I don't know. A lot of weird things about how I feel about that, especially considering you know I am still his fan, and he was on our show. But there's just certain things that I'm not going to support, and that's one of them. So yeah. Okay, so moving along, talking about painting nails. Duke yes. guard Jared McCain has signed an NIL deal with beauty and nail polish brand Sally Hansen. Of course, now North Carolina State beat Duke. But what do you think about this new deal that he is signing? Well, you know, actually, this guy McCain is the second. He he, I think he's got the second most nil deals behind. Um, who is that? Um, Ronnie James, with one point two million dollars when it comes to basketball. So he's doing really good when it comes to his endorsements. And um, to add on this endorsements, he's already with, I think it was Dick Sporting Goods and somebody else. And then he, he gets this deal to paint his nails. I think it's kind of weird. I, do, I, I think it's kind of weird, but I understand that from what he said, he painted his nails one time and he played so well, he just kept it up. And you know, our, he, he said he's not superstitious, but that would be superstitious, right? If yeah. I paint my nails... And I hit 18 threes. And then the next week, I say I'm paying my nails again. And I hit 15 threes. Then the third week, he's going to paint them nails again. That is what superstition looks like. <laughs> and so for him to say that's not superstition is wow. But then you know how people say whatever floats your boat. No, don't let this float your boat. You know, like <laughs> I think there got to be somebody that that just says, you know what? 
I've done wild things in my life. I've done crazy things, you know, and but I think I think it's time that we have some people that that keep us on some kind of compass, you know, because it, it's starting to erode the fabric of young black men. And I think when you get when you get paid a lot of money, but the things you do destroy people, I don't count that as success. Yeah, no, I I I was I'm with you on that, and uh, I went like two or three different directions with this. And one, you know, I, I always advocate for young dudes getting money, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just because I've I've went through that. You know, these guys generate a lot of money, and there's endorsement deals that you can sign to do so, right? So I'm happy uh, he's put himself in that position. The second part is, and this was like um, me thinking about um, when you look at him, he's the leader of the team. Right. And I've seen they just lost uh, to, to North Carolina State. Right. And so when you paint your nails and you fit the stereotypical prototype, light skinned, soft dude that people look at Duke to be. And I'm talking about historically back when Jalen mm. Rose and those guys was playing with Michigan and they was talking shit about Grant Hill and all those dudes down there. Like you have to have like situational awareness. And you have to say to yourself, like, um, with me being the leader of my team, am I, is this being more of a problem or more of a distraction? Even though I'm getting paid from doing so, like, is this being a, yeah. a distraction? Because I'm somebody who's from something totally different, and I would walk on the court, and I would be like, man, fuck this bitch-ass nigga. He's not about to beat me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you... you, you Just because he paint his nails? Yeah, you, you look for, as a competitor, you look for things, one, outside of your game, but then uh, the, the fabric of sports is very competitive, and however, whatever gets you going or whatever gets your teammates going, you just say certain people ain't going to beat me. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So like, these motherfuckers ain't going to beat me. It, it can be, when you rap it, it can be, man, these motherfuckers from the South or these motherfuckers from the Midwest ain't going to do something better just because yeah. there's something like, that's a you say shit. this nigga had a thong on. He can't be harder than me. <laughs> Boy, yeah. he's no jelly. He can't be tougher than me. No, he he ain't about to beat me. And so I look at that. But he could be. But he could be. He could he, be. He could, he could be. But I get to looking at that and I say, you know, knowing that you're the, the, the centerpiece of the team, sports and winning championships, bro, are about intensity, focus, leadership and to get to that level where Duke was with, under Mike Krzyzewski in that level, it ain't that sassy shit. It ain't the shaking your ass and your hips and fucking teeny bop songs. That's what these niggas is doing. You know what I'm saying? Shaking and, your hips? What you mean? Like that? <laughs> <laughs> is that the dance I'm talking about? <laughs> Listen oh, to <laughs> I, look, I, look, I, I see the nigga online and he like doing this shit. Like, come on, man. It, it, you so you said these... Uzi ain't hard? Pause. <laughs> no diddy. You said Uzi is not. But, okay, you, you, you're making my point. Uzi, Uzi's an entertainer. What I okay. think is being conflated is these athletes want to be entertainers. It's always been like so that. It's okay. So it's okay if you you saying like say Playboy Cardi wear a thong. It's okay. He's an entertainer. That's what you're saying. I'm not saying that's okay. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is entertainment is entertainment, right? These guys entertain. These are costumes and things that they do to entertain. That's one thing. When you're an athlete and it's time to go compete against people. That has its own set of parameters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How you compete and who you compete against and how you dress and how you act towards your teammates and how you influence him and who's competing against you. That's what I'm saying. So why is it okay for entertainers? And I'm saying it's because one I had one time I, I met Playboy Car. He seemed like a really cool, a cool dude and, and Uzi as well. Why is it okay for entertainers to wear thongs or paint their nails and it's not okay for athletes when they're both entertainers. Let, I'm gonna just go with my personal opinion, right? Yeah. I'm I'm gonna exclude the thong and I'm gonna just keep it to the nail piece, right? I would well, view that they go together. Yeah. Girls that wear thongs get <laughs> <laughs> So 
So if I would like in the spirit no of some, to them, I'm just just yeah. holding you accountable. Yeah, no. So the way I view it is like when you when I'm going to entertain somebody, I'm going to put on whatever outfit, costume, or whatever I have to go entertain the crowd, right? And it's a performance, right? Okay, it, it wait, wait, wait. So exclude them. Exclude Uzi, exclude Playboy Cardi, just on this subject, because there's other people that do it as well. So you're saying these athletes, it's okay for entertainers because they're going to put on a show. But yes. I thought when a when a ball player who is the number one in the country, isn't he going out there to put on a show too? Isn't no, isn't yeah. isn't um Shador putting on a show? Yes, but in the in the context, right? You're talking about the context of an artist is an individual. I go up there, I perform my music, my image, my clothing, the way I enunciate words, the way I rap, whatever it is, the way I sing. That's it. That's an artistic individualized performance. Yeah. Duke, Ohio State, Connecticut, these are institutions, right? And the institution governs. It has parameters like you, you. We can go. We can go deeper. Pause than that. These institutions are ran by board of trustees who are a bunch of old conservative men and women, right? In most cases, at most universities, and, and rap saying, is too. Rap is an institution led by um older white guys too. But they and I'm still, saying this so look, we can get. I'm saying this so we can have a, a, a balanced arguments because they're not here to put their part in, but I know that's kind of what they would say. So I'm I'm putting that in there. So we pause. No, no, it's, it, it, it's no, it's it's definitely a good discussion. But from it from when I think of when I think of the head coach, when I think of the people who run the university, I yeah. know what they're expecting out of their athletes. They won't say this out loud, but they'll be like damn, nigga, what the fuck you paying your nails for? Like, this is Duke. This is a a, a notable university. Nigga, just show up like every fucking other clean person. Cut. Clean cut. Show, show up clean cut. Don't make something a problem or a distraction that isn't. So they can't come out and publicly say, nigga, we, we are against your nails because it will make them look crazy and it'll make it look like they hating on this thing. But I guarantee you, they bet you, they wish that nigga had a, a, a Nike deal or some fucking other deal for that same money. You know what I'm saying? Because if, if you got to think like this, if they're paying you for the nails, that means every five seconds, the nigga got to do this, right? I ain't trying to hear all that shit. Nigga, I brought you here to play ball, nigga. Not to shake your nails and do TikTok videos. So what if he get the three and he goes like this with the nails? <laughs> he did versions of it. He got these yeah. niggas in the locker room. But this is what I'm saying. If you look at the, if you look at the videos, He's the leader. He's the ringleader of the team. And who wants their ringleader shaking their ass with niggas in the locker room on some sassy shit? I know niggas laugh about this, but when it's niggas who's serious, head coach is serious, man. <laughs> Assistant coach is serious. <laughs> niggas who pay for these tickets, serious. They want serious dudes, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, people put up, look, here we go. People put up with that stuff with Rodman because he was an accessory. That's what, that's what they put up with it. Michael Jordan. I get Jordan, what you're saying. I get yeah. what you're saying. Jordan you, we, we, is not supposed to have his nails black with with a tongue ring. Okay, give me one sassy nigga on anything. You can go entertainment, sports, business, anything. At the highest level, you give me one nigga who's been sassy and succeeded. It don't work like that. You want me to answer that? <laughs> There's a few niggas who, who have been sassy. Can't argue with that. Hey, go, go ahead. Stack. <laughs> right into that one, right? Hey, go ahead. Stack, go. Stack. You, well, I'll give you a few niggas. <laughs> <laughs> And we're still don't turn it back. like, I don't, I don't know. Um, well, y'all know me. I always have a different opinion. Wait, wait, wait. let's have <laughs> our discussion. There's a lot of niggas who, 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 who painted their nails, wore dresses, um, wore just everything that you would declare sassy that has succeeded. So I don't know if I agree with that because those oh, are okay. those are most of the niggas who are lit. The sassy. Yeah. The list. Let, let, 
Let, let me let me bring it down. I'm talking Y'all about the old school niggas that played out. The sassy niggas is in. That's why stat stat like all of that. She want she wanna loan him her scrungy and all of that. They what are you talking about, Stat? They both they they they, they, they weigh each other scrungies and all that. No. <laughs> <laughs> um I mean if Mace has no further comments. Yeah, I ain't gonna get into that because that'd be too that people think I'm being personal. I, yeah. with me, it's never personal, you know. I'm just here to tell the truth and 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 hopefully it helps somebody, you know. That's fair. It is what it is. It is what it is. That's fair, and I respect that. Unbiased yeah. but truthful answers. Yeah. Um, truthful answers. Yeah. So me, y'all know how I feel. I'm not, you know, blind. Like I understand why some people feel some type of way about it because, you know, some people don't want to see that. But like, that's what I see. Like, that's the world I live in. Like Jerry McCain, I've seen his TikToks all the time, especially after quarantine. He made himself very marketable. People like that. He has a flamboyant personality. And sometimes people hear flamboyant and they're like, why would I want to be described as that? I mean, it makes him look personable. It makes him look like he's exciting. Like people like stuff like that. The hip TikTok dances, I like it. Nicki Minaj be on stream with Kai Sinat doing that, and they be killing it. And those clips go viral. No, that, stop I'm that. Just saying, that's the Nikki truth. Is the ladies, Nikki yes, is a Nikki, female Nikki, icon. Nikki's the lady, but I'm she's saying that female she's icon. Kai Sinat. Like, there's plenty of men who I've been seeing dancing on TikTok, and girls eat that up. Like, I don't know what to tell y'all. Like, I feel like for them. One of the so I need to go on my. I need to go on my. On my. Uh, that's what I'm doing tomorrow. I'm getting on my. I'm, I'm... <laughs> I just feel like, truthfully, you know, if the if the man likes women and the women are into it, they don't care. One, two, they're making money from it. Three, they're not bothering anybody. And four, if it's not messing up his game, I don't. Yeah, that's <laughs> the problem. That's the problem right there. People keep saying he's making the money. Yeah, That's fine. Solid. If it makes me, you extra money, I'm all for it. I my number one thing is. It don't matter what it is, as long as you make money. I didn't say that because that can be dangerous. The main thing is as long as it doesn't mess up your game. But at the end of the day, if we're being true, if it doesn't mess up your game, that's still about money to these institutions because you okay. playing well is what puts money into the university's pockets, anyways. So it's all around the same thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy you. I'm happy you finished right there because that's the main thing. It's a so <laughs> we, we should, so she actually just helped me make a, she helped to make my point. These guys are catering to the women. The women like it. The head coach and everybody else is saying like we don't care that the women like it. We brought your ass here to win basketball games, nigga. That's it. You go over there. So, <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. So that was like the girls like it. I enjoy watching it. He's cool. <laughs> Look, so I'm saying, so he, I'm not, I'm not hating on that. I, I'm, I'm not. But what I am saying is that if I was managing and I was somebody who was close to him, I would say, "Look, bro, keep that with well, all that shit that could be a distraction. Go do it in your free time. But when you come in this ecosystem, this ecosystem, like this, this is like, I feel like my daughter, right?" My daughter thinks that she can bring her personality and her space and her things into everybody's universe, right? And I love my daughter to death. And that's more of like a Gen Z thing, if that's the generation I'm talking about. Or let me be an individual in other pieces, piece, people's spaces and my opinion matter. Nah, not for real. Like, <laughs> everybody's ecosystem is governed by whoever runs that ecosystem. Yeah. And we need to quit telling motherfuckers that like your opinion matters in every ecosystem because like that's a cool thing to say online. It doesn't, you know. Say so it's a whole lot of worlds I go into where I'm the king in my world, but when I go in other worlds, I'm fucking carrying the bags and I'm just a part of another world. But I don't think that the younger generation gets that. I hope that doesn't sound like an old man talking, but you don't talk about it. Does it does? <laughs> but it's truthful. It does. It does. Yeah. I. I was going to say, I see both points. And also with that note, before we wrap and go to break, at the same time, yes, okay, cool, everybody's opinion doesn't matter. But like, Jared, everybody knows Jared McCain's name on Duke. If you don't remember somebody else's, you know he's the one who's painting. Like, that, if that's what you want, in addition, okay, say, we cool, we don't care about the girls. Cool, we don't care about the extra money. If you want to make a name for yourself, 
he he did that. He did. Nah, 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 I'm not going. He did. <laughs> he, did. <laughs> he definitely he did. Nice. You niggas, know who Jared McCain niggas is. Niggas who became <laughs> famous for doing a lot of things that as life went on, they do not it, it doesn't help them at all. I will give you some names, but I don't want to shoot people down. But they became very popular for what they did. Made a lot of money, but at the expense of their future, and they can't go anywhere, and they can't enjoy anything. Let so, me say something. Uh, I'm going to say something before we go to break. I'm a, I'm, man, I'm glad you I'm brought that up. I'm saying this because this voice of what we're talking about and this conscious, not consciousness, but this concept is not making it to this generation. That, yeah, you may get lit, and yeah, you may make money, but at the expense of the rest of your life, some people are never going to take you serious again. And so you're doing this now. When the trolling is over, you may not have a future. Let me say something real quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to give you a name. What was the kid's name from that played for Missouri? Was a defensive player of the year, and right before the draft, he came out as gay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Michael that's... Sam. His name is Michael Sam. So all through yeah. college, just think about this: all through college, my man goes out here, dominates, become the SEC defensive player of the year. And I think that those were his stats, right? Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. So for you to be the they defensive. No, right before the right before the draft, he goes from just being a great ball player to you should stand up for all of the gay LBGTQ rights or whatever the uh, acronym is, is. And I'm just going to respectfully say it, right? So all of a sudden, he goes pre-draft, and the whole thing is hijacked for his sexuality. And somebody got behind him and said, man, you can be the face for this. And he got his boyfriend on draft day. He wants to sit with his boyfriend. He wants to be right. He wants to sit in other people's world and say that I'm an individual. I should be able to do this. I make money. All the things you said, Stat. And there was a bunch of people who pumped him up. But there was also a bunch of old men who was like, ain't no motherfucking way I'm bringing this shit in my locker room. They would never publicly say it because they would be yeah. ridiculed and people would march outside and say, fuck this institution and all this other stuff. They lose sponsorship dollars, but it is what it is. Tell us how tells it how it is. Man, they got that nigga to fuck up out the league quick. And they did it in the most polite way. Hey, you're not good. Hey, there's some things you need to work on. Because you're not about to be in no masculine male dominated field and be sitting here talking about I'm 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 doing my own thing within your thing. Nah, nigga. Oh, get the no, fuck. No, no. Is that homophobic though? Is it homophobic? Yeah. For it, you would never tell it's homophobic, but I just know it's not about to exist in that environment. So the owners, man, these dudes from where, wherever they from, they're not going for that. I like, like you talk about people who grew up in Bible belts and have old, deep rooted church traditional family values. Man, tr literally traditional family values. They're not going for that shit, bro. And, and, and we hate to say this stuff out loud, but that's what it is. And so when you look at somebody who paint their nails, there's somebody who's sitting up high and looking down. And it's cool, it's comical, but when that shit starts to affect the bottom line or it looks at like this is a distraction and it's disrupting other people, this is how they play. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is literally how they play. And I'm talking about there should be somebody in McCain's sure. corner saying that to him. Like, yo, bro, you don't want to be that yeah. person. Go ahead, my fault. Yeah, you don't want to be... Uh, so you're basically saying he shouldn't be the mascot for something that's bigger than him unless that's what he want to fully embrace and know oh. all of the things that come with it, basically. Mace, I wanted to be a real nigga. It's a lot of young niggas who want to be real niggas and play sports. Yeah. A real nigga can be a hindrance just as painting your nails can be a hindrance. A real nigga mentality doesn't exist in a professional setting. Keep that shit where it's at, but when you step in this setting, you're a professional and you function up under the guidance, right? That's set before you. And if you can't this, if you can't separate the two, your ass will be limited with your growth. And so we've always we make it to negative connotations with um people doing ignorant shit, 
but it also is with with any behavior that doesn't fit in this box. That's what I'm saying. In your ecosystem, that's what you yes. call. It. My okay. father, we we went past the break. My father, <laughs> just super quick. That is just like that's the reality of some things. But like from the beginning of time, a lot of things have been that way. And it always just takes that one person to break that barrier to see change. So if that is something that he truly cares about, if he's like, look, I can ball. If y'all really worried about me painting my nails, I'm going to paint my nails and continue to show you that I can still ball. And if he is that one to do that, he breaks that because things have been systematic like that since the beginning of time, whether we're talking about, you know, People's sexual orientation, whether we're talking about race, whether we're talking about gender, like women couldn't do stuff, black people couldn't do stuff. Like there's so many different boxes. And I know it's just sounds simple. Yeah, it's like, that, this ain't, yeah, no, this, I'm just saying this, this it's I know it's black sounds, and no, but I'm saying I know it's simple on, because we're just talking on, about painting nails. Album. But if that's something that he cares about and he's like, look, I just want to do this, like even down to wearing certain colors, people felt some type of way about that and thought that that meant you liked this or you wanted to do that. I don't think it necessarily means that. I just think like I definitely, like, I'm not blind. I get where y'all are coming from. And sometimes you do have to just play that part to just be able to get where you want to go. I understand that aspect of it. But at the same time, I don't really think it's that deep right now. Now, if it's causing hey, problems hey, and it hey, hinders his how career. Do you stat? Different, how do you start? <laughs> New generation. How do you start? 22. That's why you don't think it's that serious. Yeah. When you go talk the little pump in them, you'll see that it was, it was that serious. Little I mean, pump is around my age. That's exactly my point. <laughs> so what he thought wasn't serious before, it, it became serious, like the Allen Boys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't think they're different, that, different. Um, they're a different lane. No, I I'm saying that's stuff, from, that, though, but... stuff that you think is okay when you're younger, when as you're trying to. And shout out to both of those, those, you know, musical acts. It's just as that's why you need guidance because what Mo is basically saying is if that's what you want to do, you may be able to do that down the line. But first, establish yourself before you try to make change. You, you like that's what Kaepernick did. Hmm. Yes, change is not made from the bottom. Pause. Change is made on the top. You got to reach the top to make change. Change from the bottom is revolution. They they always get rid of revolution. When you give change from the top, pause, it's called solution. Hey, I came up with a solution. And then if you want to make change, young fellas out there, this is why you got to talk to people like me. <laughs> Don't throw your life away trying to be the first. Reach the top, and then you can make that change and be the first. But don't throw your way your life trying to be the first. Back to you, Stat. That was great. Not mad at that. And that's a good point. But I like that we all have different perspectives and all could share different aspects of what we think about it. I agree with both points. I definitely see where everybody's coming from, but I also gotta throw in, you know, what my yeah. better sees too. So okay, on that <laughs> note, we are gonna go to break. And when we return, we will talk about LSU's Haley Van Lith. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. She called this thing about toxic. Four years and counting. Got you feeling like an option. Maybe I'm my own problem, babe. She tired of hearing, I don't know. My stubborn in me won't fall. Oh, oh. Dealing with this thing called trust. But she really thinking about she want to be free. Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. Tonight, the Celtics will play the Hornets. Underdog fantasy has Jason Tatum at 27 and a half points. Do you have them higher or lower? Mace? 27 and a half points? Yes. Who are they playing again? The Hornets. Of course he's going to have more than that. Okay. This is why This is why y'all need me. Cam is not here. But for this type of stuff, Cam is not needed. I'm I'm really the go-to on this. But use code Cam. Take my advice and use code Cam. So that way he'll get you to the finals, but you'll know it was me. <laughs> okay. Shout out to Killer. You better get back, Killer. Okay. Jalen Brown's at 31 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Do you have higher or lower? 
Rebounds, points, and assists. Hmm, that's a tricky one. Pause. He could, he could, but I'm gonna go lower. Okay. And Miles Bridges is at seven rebounds, higher or lower? Hmm. Higher. Well, down well, use code Cam. Everybody use code Cam. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, download the underdog fantasy app and you can make your picks too okay so lsu's Haley van lith says there is racism behind negative lsu comments so basically an article posted a column labeling them as dirty debutantes kimolki also weighed in and wasn't happy about the article written about them so Haley van lith spoke up and said in a conference we do have a lot of black women on this team. And unfortunately that bias does exist still today. And a lot of the people that are making those comments are being racist towards my teammates. I'm in a unique situation where I see with myself, I'll talk trash and I'll get a different reaction than if Angel Reese talks trash. So what do you guys think about Haley speaking up the comments that she said, you know, speaking up for her teammates and the article that was written about LSU. What do we think about Haley speaking up? Um, it's great. It's great she's speaking up. However, um, what does debutantes mean? It sounds dirty. Well, yeah. I, I just... oh, well, Go ahead. Yeah, when I was searching debutante, like the pictures were kind of like showgirly, stripperish. So... Oh, you know what? And if they're saying that, they may be referring to like the extra baby hair, you know, they may be, I'm just saying what, what somebody can be seeing from, from, from a different vantage point. Not that it's right. I don't think any of it is right, but I'm saying this goes back to the previous conversation we were having. You must not dis do number one, the comments are wrong. However, I'm saying you must not present yourself a way and then get upset that people treat you that way, right? So if we're in this in this touchy society where people want to people want to be treated as grand, but they want to act poorly, right? So it's like I don't want to be responsible for my actions, but don't talk to me like I'm crazy but I want to be able to do crazy stuff. This, this is your generation stat. This is your generation and my generation. People want to do crazy stuff, but they want to be seen as something else. Like, no, I'm, this is just my time doing this. And it's impossible for you to be a public figure and not think that your public image hangs on how you carry yourself in public. Right. So if you got loud people, if they're doing raunchy things, if they and and then this is not what LSU is doing, but we're having a conversation because it seemed like there's a big gap of people taking accountability. It's like accountability doesn't doesn't exist. Van is saying this. How you say her name? Van Lift? Halen Park. Yeah. Like like she's saying this, but I would love to see what she says when she's not with them. Because what I notice most times is that people that say these things publicly, they don't feel that same way when they're not with black people. Not that she's like this, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it since we're on this, this topic today, there's people that'll be around you and like, Oh yeah, I got, I got black friends, da, 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 da. But do they talk that way? amongst people that are not black when black people are not there that would be a better question so that's how i feel about it it's great that she said this in public it's great that she took that stance but i've seen people do this on on different sports shows they do the same thing when they're with black people but when they're not with them they talk totally different so either way i think it's all wrong I think it's all, you know, sad that people are still yeah. in 2024 because, you know, white girls like black guys and black guys <laughs> like white girls. So I, I, I don't see Nick, how people shout really, out to Nick. <laughs> I, I don't see how people are really racist, you know? 
You I, I, the white guy stat. Look at you. I'm gonna let y'all go first before I say any of my comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying what I'm picking up, what is given. That, ain't that what y'all say? What is given? You it's take a swag. Or what is you given? take a swag that white boy. Look at you. You would. And it's nothing wrong with it. It's nothing wrong. Who said that? <laughs> like, yeah, who, I mean people be in my DMs like, who said that? Like people be asking me because of your comments, <laughs> Mason. Yeah, I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. It's all it's all good in the hood. You from Florida, so I know you probably have you ever dated a white guy? Yes. <laughs> you haven't. <laughs> but you see how you're around black people, right? And you're and you're claiming them. You get what I'm saying? I'm black. I know, but I'm saying without without them present, you're claiming them. You're speaking well of them. I'm saying most people, not a lot, not not many people often speak well of black people when they're not in the presence of black people. That's why racism can go on. If if behind <laughs> the doors there was, you know. White people with white people, and they said something about black people, and it wasn't okay. Then it wouldn't be okay publicly. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a scholar at what we're talking about right now. That's how I know how to read people' body language. You ever go around people, and you think you're cool with somebody, but their friends are not acting like you're cool, but you think you're cool with their friend, somebody that's with them. That's because behind your back. They're not mm -hmm. talking like you think y'all are right here. Behind your back is a different conversation, and that's why the energy is funny, because it's not really what you think it is. So oh, that oh. was picking up from Van Halen. Not that she's doing this, but it ain't a hundred. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you something uh, else to add on to it. When you're doing a national publication, bro, you know how many fucking editors you go through before you put material out. And so for everybody know what the fuck a dirty debutante is, when uh, I just know when I was coming up, it was What is it, Mo? Were... I didn't know. No, so I don't I don't know the exact terminology, right? But when girl when we were coming up in high school, there was girls who would go like to etiquette classes and then they would do all these etiquette classes and then it would be a debutante ball and they would all have like suits and ties and it would be some like formal things. So to to call somebody a dirty version of that is to say that that person is like basically like a piece of shit, right? But I just look at like who who's who passed this, who's destined this past for them to say, oh, okay, this shit is cool to put out. You know every fucking line of everything that goes out and you know how it's displayed. She's just the one who's pointing it out. And so she's probably also speaking to when we moving through traffic or when we whooping teams ass and to your point when motherfuckers talking shit and just, rocking how niggas rock and, and and displaying that behavior, that's going to get a, a, a certain opinion when you step in certain environments. And we can say, oh man, fuck this, fuck that. It just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? People are going to label you a certain way based upon how you act in whatever environment. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying, I know based on how I present myself, whether I'm competing and getting loud or how I'm displaying myself on social media, or when people even see me getting money and they resent it. So yeah, when you're no. young and you black and you get money, there's people who get up and work their ass off and they resent it. And people hate to hear that. That's why they try to minimize sports and talk down on it and talk so much shit like, man, these niggas shouldn't be making this money. All these things are like uncomfortable and cringeworthy to be heard out loud, bro. Yeah. But it is what it fucking is. You know what I'm saying? And until people have that honest conversation, so what ends up happening is you get these sideways remarks where dirty Debbie talks. Man, you know how many motherfuckers laughed about that and shot that out? You know what I'm saying? And so I look at- That's I, why I, I made it in the media. That's why I made it. That's exactly what I'm saying. Behind closed doors, when they were talking, that was okay. That's why I made it to print. Okay, just, just, think, about a, just think about a moment where early in the season, I was about to make a bad joke and motherfucker said this. We ain't gonna do that. You feel where I'm coming from? Yeah. Because somebody cares about you to say, nah. But if somebody lets something go through, 
you can tell that they'll let your ass jump off a bridge, but they let those comments come out. You know what I'm saying? And that that's how people collectively feel. But I, I can go on and on about this topic, yeah. but my fault, Stack. You, you go ahead and weigh wait, in. Wait, wait, I want to add something else before go Stack ahead. go. What, what else I, I thought about when it comes to Van, Van, um, Haley Van? Van Lith. Van Lith, yes. You could just say Haley. Yeah, when it comes to Haley, is this she needs to correct them because she understands what they're doing is communicating to other people. So if you're going to stand in the trenches with them on a topic that's going to affect them, also tell them about the behavior that they're doing. Because she's kind of like going about it from what I'm reading. I don't know her, but from what I'm reading, almost like in a, I'm not going to say she's being passive aggressive. I would like to see her be more assertive with them because it's their behavior. Just like she said, if she start making comments on the court, it's because it's taken totally different. It's taken totally different to who? That that means you're aware of the race difference. Mm -hmm. So if you're aware of the race difference, then you need to school them. Because obviously they don't care nothing about it. And what I've learned about friends that I may have known, when they don't care nothing about it, I don't care nothing about it. If they're not going to care about how they treat, how they talk to people and how they treat people, then I'm not going to care about their outcome because they don't care. If they want to no like, you know, like they them, then you got to accept what comes with that. That's all I'm saying. The accountability. You know this from... From the first topic to the second topic to the third topic, it's the same thing. It's no accountability. We want to act however we want, and we want to be treated grand, no matter if we're acting. No doubt. And that, that just got to change. Yeah, so my thing about Haley, I definitely respect her comments for this because Kind of to Mace's point, like if you see that your teammates are frustrated about something, then you know that you're in the position where you can make a comment and make some sort of change. You know, I respect that because I mean, a lot of the teammates have made comments about, you know, how the media portrays them and keeps trying to say that they act ghetto and stuff like that. And it's kind of like people brush over it and they're like, yeah, that's how you guys act. But now that Haley and their coach Kim has spoken up, like this is like an ESPN headline title. People are like, this is what they're saying, which I think more people need to see one. And two, I just seem, it just seems like she's a great teammate. She's been sticking up for her teammates for a lot of stuff, even in that fight with um, South Carolina when Camila Cardoso and Flage got hit. Haley was the one who ran through the side and was kind of like, even though Camila's like six, six, I don't remember how tall she is exactly, but she's mad tall. Haley's a lot smaller. She made sure that she came to her teammates' defense when nobody else really kind of like helped. Flage. How did she run to her defense? Did she throw a punch? Um, I said in the video that I seen, it looked like she stuck Camilla a little bit, a little hit. People are saying that that's not what happened. But from what I seen, that's what it looked like to me. But she definitely came to Flaugé's defense when Flaugé was on the ground. She went up to Camilla basically kind of like telling her like, what's good? That type of thing. Um, so I have a lot of respect for her because it seems like she is a good teammate. And I think that there are just a lot of negative comments towards LSU. And I've spoke about this a lot because I mean, they they do voice their opinions and people see them winning and get mad when they're winning. And it's just like, you cannot wait on somebody crazy. playing and well. They talk crazy. And, and they talk what, crazy. Everybody <laughs> talks crazy. And no, you're no, winning, not, you not like they that. talk. Not like they when you're talk. Winning, you can everybody do does not talk that crazy. They talk crazy. So that's what I'm saying. If they could give out smoke, pause. They got to be able to take smoke. They, but they that's different. If it was coming from somebody trash talking on the court, that's very different from a quote unquote professional article who's supposed to be reporting on the team. Like to me, that just doesn't look right. And as a journalist, them being journalists, you should know better than to write articles like that. That's like one of the number one things that we're, ta we're taught. Like you can be opinionated and have opinionated art articles, but to paint them in some picture that they're clearly not, and we're still forgetting that they are young women. I just think calling them- go. Black women are the most <laughs> unprotected. Let's protect the black women. Listen here, black women. 
Make sure you carry yourself like queens so they can continue to treat you like queens. Is that fair? That is very fair. And to add, so like obviously a lot of people on here watch me, follow me on social media. You can people wow. like how I present exactly. myself, right? But I don't think that they're doing anything to present themselves in the wrong, like they're not, like they're not doing anything that's crazy out of pocket. Social media, our lives are, you know, looked at in a microscope nowadays. Like, I mean, even before, I mean, I don't think everything was as, you know, public as it is now, obviously. Um, but I don't think that they're doing anything to to be getting any of this. So, so stack, let me, let me add on to that, right? I, um, I can agree with you when you say, I don't think they're doing anything purposely, right? And sometimes culturally, how we act in our neighborhoods or how we grow up, and I know Flange comes out of uh, New Orleans or Baton Rouge, and I don't know which part of New Orleans that she comes from. Angel comes from uh, Virginia, D.C., Baltimore area, somewhere over in there, right? And there's things that we do when we working out, when we playing games, when we compete in that, works for those environments but it goes back same thing i was talking about the kid from duke right those behaviors exist like personally amongst yourselves when you're working out and doing your thing but these institutions are controlled by donors by sponsorships by dollars the people who fill these stands are old white families people who have graduated and people who continue to come to these institutions and these games to support these teams so when they sit down, their expectation is to see a certain thing. And so when, this is no offense, I listen to a little boosty music. When you got set it off playing in the background and you have young women and they say, you want to talk shit, you want to run your mouth, you want some gangsters in your motherfucking house, we have set this bitch off. <laughs> and then that's what makes the stand for you not to say, I don't understand how people are looking at me like this. <laughs> that I got caught AK-47 guns. No, no, over. say it again, Mo. <laughs> say it again. Cause she don't understand it. Say it again. <laughs> wait, say it again. Wait, 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 wait. Let Mo finish. <laughs> I'm a I'm a boosty fan. No, I no, just that. say the song. <laughs> say the lyrics. This is what's playing. Go ahead, Mo. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> hey. Hey. Go ahead. Say it. Look, if you want to talk shit, you want to run your mouth, you want some gangsters in your motherfucking house, we'll set this bitch off. Now listen to me. There <laughs> people have just never seen this out of women that. This what yeah. goes on yeah. in our communities. Yeah. This what goes on behind closed doors. Yeah. This would go on in the parties. This would go on when we by ourselves. But then we seem to take ourselves like we will accept it from football was Kim, players. Was Kim Monkley going like this when it was playing? <laughs> <laughs> look, hold on. Let, 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 hey. Was she doing that? Was she doing it? I have a I have a response. I'm just no, I, no, let me just, I'm, I'm on, I'm going like this is all I want to know. So wh wh what I'm saying is this that I'm a boosty <laughs> fan. I still listen to nigga shit. I'll be back in all Cam's old music. Every I be all, I'm full nigga, right? But when I go somewhere, I don't take that with you me. You play it on the PGA tour. Nah, I I you gotta you got you got to. This is part of maturing, part of and it's developing. it's not selling out. No, it's not selling out. It's understand this is what the environment calls for. And sometimes when you're younger, you want to push your youth or your mentality in a space or in a system, and you can't get mad that they respond a certain way. Now, I've said my piece about the editors and allowing this shit to happen, but then to elaborate what May said is like, okay, now, Stat, there's a reason that you present yourself a certain way. There's a there there's a reason I you sent you a message, up, right? You turn up, but you just you but, just but, think coming on camera doing all of that. So it's the same way. We're gonna protect our sisters at all costs. We're saying now because we're protecting you, don't just throw us in 
in wars because you know we're gonna protect you. And let me let me because because yeah. stuff can be stuff can get made out of context. I love Flange. That I sent you her freestyle earlier. I I enjoy her rapping. She can really rap. I enjoy Angel Reese. I knew Angel Reese from Jordan Hawkins. They come up together. Jordan is my dude who played for the Pelicans, right? But I'm also going to say I've been through my nigga phases and I wanted to push my nigga phase into everybody's face. And that ain't what it is. And you don't understand it till you get older. That's it. I do want to just preface. I understand all of that, which is why I am 22. I am the generation you guys are talking about. I can come on camera and talk with you guys. Everybody thinks I'm older than I am. I act accordingly. I know how to present myself in certain spaces and I take pride in that. And I have respect for myself for doing that. Always going to do that. But in this case, to me, it feels like that's why I'm saying social media is just such when you have just cameras everywhere recording everything you do. I don't think like they're not doing that on the court, like that video of them singing Lil Boozy, like everybody knows in Louisiana, Lil Boozy is that guy like at LSU. Mm -hmm. White kids, Asian kids, black kids, everybody singing to him knows it word for word, all the songs. That's just how they vibe. They were dancing to that song in the locker room. But people, for these instances, when it comes down to those articles, are all gonna all of a sudden gonna bring up those videos and be like, see, this is how they act. And like I promise you, they probably don't act like that 24-7, but I just know how it looks. That's nah, basically nah. what I'm trying to say. Like the way things are carried on social media, like you know, when they always say, like, bad timing or like social media is forever these clips are going to be brought up like that's just what people do that's the way the cookie crumbles that's why it's like we are expected to carry ourselves in a certain way at all times because you never know when stuff is going to be brought up but at the same time it's just like it sucks for them because it's just like i know they're just living life they're in college things that you know other people did in college they probably never do now and i'm not saying that oh. they're actually wild because they're not but it's just like that's just how it goes social media are things recorded we're seeing that stuff so oh. No. I, let, me, let me go. go no, ahead. no, yeah. it's not. It is 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 once you get a reputation for oh. something, that's what you're 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 um you're not acknowledging. It's the, once you get a bad reputation, everything is perceived bad because you have a bad reputation. So it's other black girls that play basketball that could throw Boosie on, and they're not gonna be called that because they don't have the history of bad behavior. Are you getting what I'm saying? Once you get the <laughs> history argue with of that. bad behavior, we, we, they're, they're viewing things just like if we was talking about AB. Because of the history, anything that seems wrong, we're not going to give the benefit of the doubt to AB. We're going to give the benefit to Hamlin, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because of reputation, but she she, she was, people, and this is what um all of our culture period is not being taught. They're not being taught that it's profitable to have a good name. A good name is profitable. You're supposed to guard that with everything, and the society is saying if I could. This is, goes back to our, one of our first conversations. If you can make money doing something. People just think it's the thing to do. But if it's going to ruin your name, yeah, you're getting a lot of likes on this. Because even myself, I started coming across people like, I don't know if I want to be perceived like that. I'm not just going to be taking shots at people because it make it make money online or this and that. That's not my vibe. That's not my my thing. So I, I got to pretty much just take, say the truth about stuff. But I'm throwing no extra shot at nobody because that's not. That's not me, but once you get that 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 crown for that, that's how everybody see everything you say. And they won't give you the benefit of the doubt, even myself, of something I said, even if it came from a good place, because you're known, your reputation is this. So that's how people see the things you say. It's on you. But, but I, I'll add to this. It's what it goes back to. I remember when I first started having success at Ohio State, the coach gave me a book, The Prayer of Jabez. And it was about to whom much is given, much is required. And as you get blessed in a larger territory, you can't act like everybody else. I was young and I didn't get it. So when I go ahead and give you this contract and I say, I'm going to give you a million NIL deals, 
or I'm giving you money for Gatorade. I'm giving you money for this. That is a contract. Inside of that contract, there's language that you need to fit within the brand's requirements. You need to act accordingly. It is an, it's, it's an it's engagement. And so that doesn't give you the ability to do what you want to do. And I'm not saying that they have been doing that, but the 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 like the perception is like sort of like what May said. Let me get the money, let me act like myself, and let me do what I want to, even though I'm sitting inside of somebody's ecosystem that has all of these standards, requirements, and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. And so, and, and I think that's the that's the major point that I'm trying to make. If you young, if somebody gives you money, somebody aligns their brand with you, or you're at an institution that has institutional values, whether you like it, hate it, love it or not, that environment that's bringing you all of your success dictates how you should act or what people expect from you. That's yeah. it. When, I, when I'm on this platform, it is what it is. This ain't my thing. I'm functioning up under Mace and Cam, and I'm functioning accordingly. Even what I say out of my mouth, even when I play around on the internet, I'm associated with this brand. So I'm thinking of them and how I'm perceived. Like I wouldn't do no silly shit because it's like they wouldn't co-sign it. So that's what I'm talking about. Understanding alignment, understanding where you at inside the process, the system. And so I can go on and on about it. Y'all see, I'm, I'm passionate yeah. about this stuff. So I'll let you go. Step my fault. <laughs> no, I want to say I agree 100%. And I understand that. I just, I'm basically just saying, I don't think it's necessarily fair, but I just know that that's how things are supposed to go. And even though I am the younger generation, because it, it feels like I'm just like speaking to you for Gen X, Gen Z, whatever, because I technically am. But um, that is an understanding that a lot of people don't realize because I mean, at the, at the end of the day, we're thinking like, this is, this is our world. Everybody else is living in it. Like, that's just what younger people think. Like I, I have to ex exit myself in my brain is just like this, that's what it is. Um, which isn't the reality. Things do have to function in a system. And that's what I think our generation is just like break the system. Like that's annoying. Like we don't have to do things by the book. We don't have to do things. And the reality is like, that's how things are. I also think that's why I'm in the position that I'm in because I listen a lot. Like I definitely take what you guys say and listen to that and understand all of that. I'm not saying that I always think it's fair because for example, like, yes, like LSU, should act a certain way in certain spaces because they know that people are already going to have that image and stuff of them because of past behavior. I just don't think that's fair because I'm still thinking like, hey, they're young girls in college, they're living their life, but I understand the requirements that need to be taken so that doesn't keep happening. It just doesn't feel fair to feel like that they have to act a certain way in order to be taken seriously or not be called ghetto and ratchet just because they're living their lives. But that's just the reality of how things are and how things function and how things work in a system but that, that makes any sense that does, <laughs> makes a lot of sense that, that does living your life means being ghetto living your life some yeah. people some people are some people are like that you know some people are, some people just are ghetto and that's fine like no i'm saying because you you use the term of them living their life and it's not fair when, when yeah when, because when you're giving something, everything you get comes with responsibilities. Yeah. To say somebody gave you something and it's not fair that they're requesting a responsible behavior is yeah. is is crazy. But that's so my point when I say that is right, like if you if you I don't I don't even have a good analogy. Like if you live a certain way and you act a certain way and you're around certain people and that's all you know, and then you're just put into a completely different situation that you're not used to. A lot of people don't have that reality check, like, okay, this is a different scenario. You know, let me let me do what's being requested by this institution. Some people are just like, that is making me change who I am. Kind of a good example, and I don't even want to go into a whole nother discussion because we do have to wrap soon. Like Shikari, like everybody was like, why is she doing this? Why is she doing that? Why is she wearing her hair like this? And it's just like, that's just who I am. So y'all are trying to make me change who I am. And that's not what I want to do. You know, she yeah. got, you know, a lot more leeway after the fact, but it took a lot of things in between for her to be able to be, quote unquote, taken seriously. Because then it was like, all right, people are saying really out of pocket things, but I just- well, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. This is, this this is really disturbing, honestly, because 
even when you think of Shikari, she could have almost lost a career. Yeah. When she's a go, her talent is a gold medalist, but her brain is fried rice. You you can't you you got to change that mentality because that's what causes us as a people to underachieve. By the time you grow up, you're an old head. See, you're saying this now, but you're not realizing we was young niggas and saying the same thing. And so many opportunities are lost. So the people are telling you this so you don't be out here looking like scrambled eggs. You know what I'm saying? You, you, Your talent is iconic, but your character is going to have you back in the hood. There's, you don't go as far as your talent. You go as far as your integrity. That And that's what people are not teaching any, not teaching most young talented people don't understand that. That's why we have so many people that don't get to their full potential because your talent is only going to get you there. But this behavior that we talking about is going to be the reason somebody either answers the phone or nah, we're going to pass on that. And then people are like, well, he could have played for eight more years. Why is he not playing? It's his behavior. It's the same conversation we're talking. Well, she well, could have done this. Why she's not on Pepsi? Because Pepsi don't want weed smokers on on the cover. <laughs> but she's living a life. No, you to be great, you sacrifice to be great. Well, I, I think also, man, and I know you got to wrap it up in a second, set, but we need to get out the mindset that maturing, becoming professional, uh, having class is a white thing. That is that is an evolving <laughs> thing. And, you know, it's just, it's like, we think like that all black people ain't supposed to be niggas. You know what I'm saying? We're not, like, we're not supposed to function and, you know, function at the lowest level of humanity socially, verbally, or, you know, just interpersonal skills. It's not. But we got this thing that uh, since we can't hold on to like, and that's not even black culture. Like nigga ghetto culture is not black culture. Like let's start to separate that shit too. Like how you present yourself stat is how I would want my daughter to present herself, right? And that's that's no offense to nothing else, but it's just how I would want my daughter to represent our family and to care about our name and how she interacts with people and just being thoughtful and all this other shit. And so we we need to do that. That is the big thing where. You like you know, motherfuckers speak proper English or they clean up their dialect or they enunciate words and we'll be like, oh, this motherfucker acts white. No, motherfucker, he's acting like a human being who's read and has learned more words and wants to present himself better. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and that's what I'm talking about. And this ain't no shot at Angel Reese. This ain't no shot at Flange. This is no shot at everything because go Google my shit. I went through that phase, but it took for my ass what makes it stand. That's why it resonates to his home. I lost a lot of opportunity being a nigga. And I thought that I stood for all these niggas in my neighborhood and they had to see me. No, that's where them niggas stopped. You know what I'm saying? And they make you hold on to a space because they don't want to grow no more. And then yeah. when you start to get outside of that space, motherfuckers be like, oh, you changing? Yeah, motherfucker, I am because I'm starting to experience more. These niggas who you impressed and who sending you direct messages and you represent for us. These niggas ain't cutting you the checks that's helping you advance. Yeah. That's the shit that we need to learn about. But we think that when we leave this nigga shit behind, that we're about to fucking fall apart. And like, you know, you about to get some other friends who didn't come up all broken shit. Sometimes you need to leave niggas where they at. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you need to leave the nigga shit where you at. And that, and, and, and nigga ain't just black person. Niggas is white boys too. Asian motherfuckers, Indian motherfuckers, all it's, it's just low yeah. level behavior. So it's that mindset is low take, life. Take the yeah, take the take the race piece off of it. It's just like when you get a million dollars, two million dollars, and you're the face of an institution, you don't dictate how you fucking act. You can say I can put my little sauce on it, but you need to figure out who the fuck came yeah. before, and you say, okay, this is how they get paid. The greatest motherfucker all time that I'm gonna tell you like this. Hails from fucking Akron, Ohio. You think that motherfucker ain't a nigga on some level? Yeah. But you know what he's mastered? 
he's mastered the art of being a professional. And people pay LeBron for being a fucking professional. Fuck the game shit. Fuck all the basketball, the point shit. I don't even have a fucking opinion on it, right? But I can tell you like this, they pay that nigga for being a professional. So for any young kid who's looking, they can say this is somebody who played the game the right way. And so he may go with Rich and Mav and all these motherfuckers and be a nigga where he wants to be a nigga, but you ain't gonna never catch him talking about you wanna talk shit. I bet you you know every word of the song though. You feel where I'm coming from? And that's what I'm talking about. And so hopefully I said it with taste. Sometimes they beat me up in the comments. So I wanted to make sure I cleaned it all up. Stay it with taste, grow the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? It's not bad for niggas to grow the fuck up yeah. and be better. That's it. And stop keeping people down with that behavior. Because <laughs> it's like as you get as you become a, an icon or a legend or whatever you are, is you're holding people back by making people think that's cool. Like it's the people who who blow up and they try to stay the same. You're actually doing us a disservice instead of showing us we could be more because if you stay the same, you're going to end up losing everything. And then everybody's going to be looking at you like a, like a donkey. Like what, why did, what happened to you? So the same people that champion the behavior is going to call you stupid when you lose everything. Oh. And that's a snapple fact. No doubt about it. I'm sure we all have plenty of more comments because this is actually a great conversation and a yeah. gem of an episode because we took a lot of sports topics, but it it became a lot of things that are deeper that need to be spoken about that a lot of people aren't talking about. But we must come to an end. <laughs> <laughs> Maurice, thank you for being here. I love y'all, man. Mo, Nick, you did your thing. Pause. No diddy. <laughs> and it's that you held it down. Stat, stat, you could talk a lot. Stat, I didn't know you talked that much. <laughs> hey, we missed you, Cam. Hey. And Cam, <laughs> hurry up back <laughs> and stay off the plane with Mike Tyson. I heard he's looking for you, Cam. <laughs> well, that is all the time that we have for today. All right. Uh, 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 like when they doing them two for five.